Hello everyone, Sheldon with iHardware here. Uh, this video is going to be about a Penny MD system that I just did. The uh, reason why I built this was that the Penny MD is a 10 year old processor now by uh, January. The time I'm making this video is uh, December 28th, I believe. Actually, it's the 29th. Uh, so almost January uh, when this processor was released back in 2005. Um, I admit, no, it was 2006, January of 2006. So uh, process is going to be 10 years old and I wanted to see what the performance is like with the Pentium dual core compared to uh, the newer Pentium processor, dual core processor, stuff like that. And all I can say is that in some tasks the processor has aged quite well um, and in many others it has not. That is very noticeable. Um, so right here on the screen right now I'll show you guys the actual system in a few af after all this. Um, going through everything. Uh, the one downside to the Pentium dual core is that it also does not have an onboard, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, temperature sensor. Uh, so, oh, wow. So it doesn't show the um, uh, core temperatures. The only sensors that are able to detect the CPU's uh, core temps and stuff like that is the um, thermal sensor that is in the socket uh, itself. So uh, when this gets up, it gets up around 60 degrees. Um, so I'm assuming core temps are around 65 degrees Celsius. Um, this is one of Intel's, if not Intel's hottest running processor. Um, so temperatures like that are not uh, anything to be shocked by. And it even, the, you'll, as you'll see by the cooler second, the cooler is actually quite decent for uh, this cooler. So using a stock Intel cooler that came with these things, it was probably one of the beefiest uh, stock Intel coolers or that Intel shipped. So um, I could probably show you guys that too in a few. Uh, basically it's a thicker version of the current stock uh, Intel uh, processors. Um, it's probably, the the ones currently are probably about that tall. It's about double the width thickness of a uh, current uh, stock Intel heatsink for the Core i7. So, um, other than that, um, hard drive temperatures and decent. Temperatures in this case are decent, mainly because I actually put a, um, I believe it's an 80 millimeter fan in the front. Uh, and then there's a 90 mil in the back and then the power supply is also exhausting. So heat isn't that great um, To airflow isn't that great, but it's good enough to where the temperatures stay below 60 degrees Celsius uh, In most cases, which I like to see um, Everything else seems pretty normal here for the graphics card. I do have the GT uh, 630 um, I have to redo the thermal pads or, or I mean the fan uh, I need to re-lubricate the fan the G um, GeForce uh, 8600 GTS that I was using originally for this system. Uh, I don't want that fan to go bad on that. Uh, so I'm working on getting that uh, re-lubricated. Uh, Sorry, that's getting really irritating. I'll probably have to change that in a few. Um, but basically, uh, it was actually nice that I did use the GT630 because that eliminated the bottleneck of the uh, graphics card for the most part with all the benchmarks that I ran. Um, so the uh, main bottleneck in the system is actually the CPU. So... Um, another one could be the RAM, uh, because the system only supports 3.25 gigs of RAM. That is also with a 64-bit operating system, as I can show you guys here. Uh, that is because of the 945 chipset. Other, uh, the rest of the RAM is being used for, um, uh, what was it? Some other services. I can't remember, like the onboard uh, RAID controller. Something, something weird it said in the uh, owner's manual to this board. So, yeah, it's only 3.5 usable, actually. So, yeah, another... Uh, Half a gig is being used uh, for allocated resources. Uh, it doesn't. I'm not using onboard video as you saw, so yeah, it's not dedicated to that. It's something else. Um, but yeah, the max this board support is four gigabytes of RAM. That's because of the 945 chipset. Uh, I haven't refreshed this in experience index since I put the GT630 in there, but um, performance-wise, to be expected, I think the lowest one was actually the hard drive. Uh, actually, no, it was the processor. So yeah, that is the bottleneck in the system. That is good to see. Um, so, uh, in the benchmarks that I ran, um, on the forum, the ones I already did show, uh, all those are showed on there. Uh, what I want to show in this is, uh, GTA 4 maybe, I will also run, um, what was it? There was some other game, oh yeah, Counter-Strike Global Defense. This was actually very surprising how well, uh, the game ran on this. It actually was more than playable, um, got a good enough graphics card, you could play this game no problem. Uh, this is a 1024 by 1080, 1286 monitor. What was this? Yeah, 1280 by 1040 or 1024. So, um, decent resolution monitor. So, um, 
game actually was the one that shocked me the most. Other than that, uh, nothing really to be shocked by. I could go through the CPU-Z for you guys really quickly as that loads up. Uh, Multitasking-wise and stuff like that, it's not that great. You can have a few tabs open in um, uh, Google Chrome. Uh, the RAM is not the limitation with Chrome in the system. It is the CPU, uh, which I can show you guys also. Um, so core voltage 1.29, uh, I believe. Oh, yep, 29. So it's a 1.3 uh, volt core, I believe, um, which I thought was surprisingly high for this. But um, actually for this uh, processor, I believe this is a 95 watt TDP processor. It actually might be higher than that. Um, so it definitely likes to use its resources. Uh, 3 gigahertz, uh, it's Pressler uh, architecture. Um, L1 cache. The main board is a D945 GTP. It's a nice Intel board. I'll show you guys that when I open up the system. And the BIOS I just updated is to the 2007 version BIOS, the highest version BIOS, uh, and the last BIOS that was released for the system. Uh, four gigabytes, two four gig sticks, or two two gig sticks of DDR2, uh, as you can see here. And the manufacturer of this RAM, let's see if it shows me, uh, it's Kingston. So, good RAM. Uh, graphics GT630, like I said, uh, we could do a quick bench here, single processor. Um, I'll leave the reference unchecked. Uh, for a bench processor, let's just do bench it. Please select. Let's do an A10. So performance-wise, yeah, that's exciting, isn't it? Uh, so multi-thread. Um, eh, not too bad on multi-thread. That's actually better than I was expecting. So nothing minor. But for a CPU, you can find in the trash. It's actually quite surprising, and for being 10 years old, it's it's definitely a uh, unique little type of processor. So uh, I'm going to open up some tabs, get some YouTube videos going, and I'm also going to open up the side panel of the case to show you guys the internals on this system. So I will be right back. All right, so I got the side panel off, and it's just a crazy mess in here. It looks like on camera with the light shining on everything. Uh, so yeah, uh, kind of get into it a little bit more. So yep, GT630 there, great little card. Um, not too uh, bad, I'm glad I actually have it. It's a good card for what it is. Um, only downside is it uses GDDR3 uh, memory. It does have two gigs of onboard video RAM, which is nice for higher resolutions. Um, but yeah, it's only a GT, or GDDR3 instead of GDDR5. There was a one gig model, and that's GDDR5, so depending on the use case, uh, that might be a better option. Usually that's a better all over uh, performance gain. Uh, for the CPU cooler, got the Hyper T2. Um, the thing isn't running that hot. I have a 1080p 60fps video test. I'm going to run in a second to show you guys uh, HD video quality test. Let me make sure it is at 1080p. Sorry, I'm going to leave the light on because um, I want to show you guys the inside of the system. So yeah, nice card, a uh, decent card for this. Um, anything higher, even this card's getting bottleneck, to be honest, by the CPU, like I said. Uh, main board is the uh, Intel 945 GTP. Uh, like I said, there's two two gigabytes of DDR2, uh, 800, or 667 megahertz, I actually believe. Uh, for, the rent, or for the hard drives, uh, I actually had to put this 80 gigabyte Seagate in there to uh, accommodate for the games that I downloaded for the testing. Uh, and then below that's an 80 gigabyte WD blue uh, I, parallel ATA drive. So, uh, yeah, so we got a SATA drive and a parallel ATA drive in here. Um, both of them are really actually nice hard drives. The Seagate sounds absolutely horrible, but um, Crystal Disk Info says the hard drive is running perfectly fine. So, if it works in here, I guess I'll leave it in there. Uh, like I said, I got the 80 millimeter fan there. It is plugged into the motherboard. All of these fans are connected to the motherboard and powered by the onboard fan controller. Um, keeps them at a good speed. It's a quiet system. It's actually more quiet than my main system, which is kind of sad. Um, I did put the thermal take, um, 430 watt, um, T2 power supply in there. Uh, very nice power supply. Um, has a ton of Molex connectors, uh, and only two SATA connectors. So, uh, in this case, it worked out, uh, perfectly fine. Uh, on the front, I removed the floppy drive and stuff like that, mainly because I didn't have the, uh, power connector and I switched the case. I don't know where I put all my three and a quarter inch uh, floppy drives, uh, beige ones. So uh, I can't find those until I will. I'll throw one in here because it needs to be in there to match the system. I really do. Um, it, it needs a floppy drive to look proper and uh, to be a real computer. Uh, so uh, other than that's pretty much it. And then I'm just yeah using this Inwin V500 case. 
Um, so it's nothing too spectacular of a system. Um, but as for the video test, let me turn this light off unlike I did that last time. It's definitely being very sluggish with 1080p. So, for maybe it's actually going now. Let's see how it performs. This video is by Yogscast, I believe. Did a 1080p video test. I can't remember the name of this game. It's handling it very surprisingly well. I be honest, I haven't ran a 1080p video at full. Uh, 60 FPS yet on this system, so I'm in shock on my own right now. Um, just to prove that I'm not faking this at all, it's at 1080p 60 FPS. Um, I could even go to the extent of showing that that DVI to VGA parallel connector goes into that graphics card that goes into that system. It runs all the way over here behind the monitor and plugs in there. So this is this system that's running this video. And I will also show you that it does have the Pentium dual core in it. Because I know some people might not believe that it's running like this. And to be honest, I wouldn't believe that it's running this well. So, Pentium D supports 1080p video at 60fps still on YouTube. So, I don't know how I would handle raw footage. Probably not nearly as well. Because that takes a lot of um, pre-rendering and other uh, intense video tasks that I am not quite familiar with at this moment I can't know I don't know why I'm not remembering any of that stuff um, but yeah let's put this video down let's see what the core temps are um, so it's getting up to 50 53 at the max it said uh, let's see what the graphics cards at 48 not bad graphics card gets kind of hot uh, it gets up to 70 degrees um, depending on the load of the system um, but yeah, wow, I'm pretty shocked. Um, handling two videos, I know it's able to do that at 480p, so that's one thing. Um, but yeah, web browsing and stuff like that, if we open up multiple tabs, this isn't a great monitor to show multitasking on, but it's able to handle everything pretty surprisingly well. You'd be pretty surprised by how good it runs. Um, we could open up another YouTube video. See how well that runs. Let's rewind this. I definitely noticed some slowdown. Uh, type 10 or 800p okay um 30 fps versus okay we could just open up this one's by digipost yogcast ridge dog made that video in digipost just so you guys know what these videos are that video is not doing it so handling both of these at um high or not working at all both the 1080 no it might, after the video gets to buffer for a little while. It seems like they're actually doing... Yeah, no. There's some points, I bet you. Let's open up Task Manager and see what it's showing. Yep, CPU spend at 100, usage, um, processes. Uh, RAM, yeah, like I said, it's not the problem in this scenario. Uh, it's definitely the CPU being the bottleneck. So watching a single 1080p video is more than fine on this... Uh, CPU as long as you pair it with a proper graphics card, but having multiple tabs open and multiple things going It's not a great multitasker. So if you're the type of person that's just browsing the web and stuff like that This CPU is more than capable still um, But it's a power resource hog um, It's not a power efficient processor in any way possible. So if that's something that bugs you don't get it one at, at all um, Yeah, I'm pretty shocked by how it's able to handle that single 1080p video. So um I think that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I was expecting to talk a little about a little bit more, but um, unable to open CSGO for right now. I was going to show you guys that, but for some reason, the Steam Store has been all messed up recently. It's not letting me ping online with that, so uh, that's weird. I tried running it offline. doesn't let you do that because it's CSGO, um, so I can't show you guys that, but... Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I don't want to ramble on anymore, but that's the Pentium Dual Core System. Uh, I was going to try and make another video today, see uh, what I can do. Uh, I actually got some main big uh, updates coming with my main system. Uh, so I will do a quick video on that of the before and after. Uh, so that the after video should be posted probably tomorrow. I will post the um, before video uh, probably later tonight along with this video. So... That's it, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, hopefully, some of this stuff was pretty surprising to you guys also, as it was to me. Um, Pentium dual-core processor. 
old processor, horrible processor, whatever you want to call it. It's a very interesting processor from Intel, and they probably hate me for making a video about it right now. So, anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, the next video is going to also be, uh, I'm going to do some overclocking with the Pentium Dual Core, which was the series that came out after the Pentium D-Line to replace them on uh, the Cornor uh, manufacturing process uh, that was released uh, with the Core 2 Duo lines and the Core Series, first Core Series processors. Um, so when that motherboard gets in and do that, uh, got some pretty interesting stuff coming in the mail, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, and before I say anything else, I'll catch you guys in the next video.